have gender stereotypes. Let's go and check. Hello. Hi. This is Maya Nuzhuk-Sabai and Dilara Urnbasarova and welcome to our discussion session on EDUC 710 Educational Studies in Context, also known as Cultural Context of Education, which is taught by our professor Dr. Anna Cohen-Miller. So during this course we cover such topics as social and cultural dimensions of schooling, political economy of education, gender and education, and also social mobility. So particularly this discussion session is dedicated to gender and education. This topic was brought by our guest, guest lecturer, Dr. Jennifer Lewis, um, who is Associate Professor at Graduate School of Business at Nazarbayev University and at the same time Director of Women Lead Association. Uh, we would also like to list some authors that we refer to during our discussion, who is Auster and Wandsbach, uh, Zadkir and Zittelman, and also Dr. John Gray. So, um, Jennifer Lewis shares the concept of gender education. And this central claim, which was backed up by her research, was that uh, the formalized education as well as social institutions are gendered. And uh, uh, we cannot avoid gendering, mm -hmm. uh, but we can be aware of it and we can recognize it. Um, then we can make a choice what to do with it. So in the uh, frame of our discussion session today, we are seeking to answer three following questions. Question number one, uh, what does it mean to be gendered? Uh, is our knowledge limited by gender? Um, and uh, is gendering um, avoidable or not? And what can be done with it? So what does it mean, gender, to be gendered? We know that most of social institutions are gendered, and this was told by our guest lecturer, Jennifer Lewis. Gendering is the formation of attributing some maleness or femaleness to some circumstances. For example, when we um, attribute some male or female characteristics to person, position, or maybe a role. Um, let's say, Delara, when you had your baby uh, girl, which color did you her dress in? Well, that was pink. Yeah, and the boy? Blue. Okay, so why do we think that girls should wear pink while boys should wear blue? Why don't we dress boys in pink? We think that is not appropriate. So why is that? Because we socially decided that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. This is how we socially construct the gender. We pass these beliefs to each other through our interaction and daily communications. Yeah, and I just want to add up that um, there was research done by Auster and Mansbach back in uh, 2012, uh, four years ago, uh, they conducted research uh, which was focused on gender marketing toys on Disney Store website. And the research found out that uh, today um, toy companies tend to market highly stereotyped uh, toys. And uh, the research found that uh, this really prevents our children to develop a wide variety of social, physical, and cognitive skills. So, um, and I have a question. Do you think can this gender bias, which is set by our society, uh, actually limit our knowledge? You know, according to this research done by Zadkir and Zittelman, gender bias affects both genders, but in different ways. Uh, for example, let's talk about teachers' gender bias. What does it mean? It means that teachers treat girls and boys differently. For example, when they ask boys, usually it happens more frequently and also they wait for their answers much longer and provided uh, more detailed feedback rather than girls. But there's another side of the story when boys are more punished than girls because girls are supposed to be well behaved and quiet in the class. Can you imagine that those stereotypes can even be self-imposing? Mm. That yeah. In what ways? It is, for example, if boys uh, succeed, they will think that is achievement of their intelligence, while girls would think that it is just a good luck. But it is interesting point that when boys fail, 
they refer to it to just bad luck while girls think that it is an, an inability to perform well uh, also when choosing the specialties and professions uh, girls and boys want to pursue usually boys um, t uh, choose hard sciences rather than girlish dancing arts and even reading and they're ashamed of being engaged to such girlish subjects which is very interesting so i have a question for you Dilara. how do you think what can be done with it can the school management deal with this beliefs at school well uh, actually um, there is a statement like gendering is unavoidable mm -hmm. as we discussed in our class facilitation and as our guest lecturer jennifer lewis mentioned uh, it's unavoidable and i agree with this um, statement uh, actually, at schools, uh, what principals should do, at least they should uh, make sure that their teachers um, at their school do not enhance this uh, teacher bias even more in their teaching practices, in their teaching styles, in teaching methods, and in treating uh, boys and girls differently. So, uh, equal chances and opportunities should be provided both for girls and boys uh, in classroom practices. So, in general, do you think that we should eliminate and minimize those stereotypes or should we just accept it? Uh, well, we cannot make a claim, uh, first of all, uh, yes, uh, that whether gendering is good or bad, right or wrong. So, uh, it fundamentally changes education that we receive and education that we provide. So, and uh, as we all mentioned in our class and during our guest lecturing, uh, education process is gendered mm -hmm. and gendering is unavoidable and um, what we can do is we should make an attempt to minimize it by being aware so awareness of society may help to minimize gender stereotype uh, this minimizes pressure on people by providing more choices and opportunities both for girls and boys men and women and if a girl wants to pursue a, a career in in the field which is uncommon for women, which is again set expectations and beliefs uh, set by society. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, that girls um, cannot be a truck driver, mm -hmm. plumber, builder or pilot. Um, and uh, she should not make a choice based on society perceptions. Mm -hmm. right? If she wants to become a pilot, uh, just let her be. Yes, just let her be and uh, her parents should uh, be aware of this, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, so accept her desire and wish and also support her. But what about the psychological side of these genders? So we know that we are psychologically different as uh, Dr. John Gray also told, told in his book that, that if we want to build a harmony and live in peace with other gender in the family, do we have to accept and uh, know and be aware of these psychological differences which would help us um, just live together, not apart, and accept each other? Yeah. So, and as educators, uh, we should be aware that we're not teaching just one part mm -hmm. yes, of truth. and, and just one part of which is approved by our system but um, we are providing all this information and opportunities mm -hmm. uh, to both boys and girls so we think that awareness of gendering is important but again there should be no lifelong decisions done by both genders only because they are different in gender yeah so thank you for watching our um, discussion. If you have any questions, you are welcome to comment um, under this video. Yeah. Okay. So, thank bye you. Bye bye. See you in class.